Hey everyone, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the uh, ritual or the uh, control mapping for the Ruby device. This is the device made by youthere.com, Jim Hall, uh, the creator, great, great guy, uh, really good uh, support over at uh, youthere.com. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on the ritual and control mapping. First thing you want to do is make sure that your motor is either disconnected from the ESC or your prop is removed. Um, in my case, I've just disconnected the wires from the ESC and I'll be uh, running the Ruby on my FPV Raptor. So the first thing you want to do is turn on your transmitter. I'm running the Dragon Link with the 12 channel receiver. You make sure you have your correct uh, aircraft uh, selected and uh, all your switches are in the uh, down position, meaning your flaps are, are up and your mode switch, whichever switch you decide, is on the manual mode. You'll have three different modes, which is manual, aided mode, and return to home or fail safe. So uh, now that I've got my transmitter on, what I'm gonna do is have the aircraft pointed north. Uh, for me, north is in this direction, east is this direction, and west and south. So uh, first thing you wanna do is go ahead and plug in my Ruby device and now you do the ritual after you completely install the uh, Ruby, the GPS and the airspeed sensor in your aircraft. The first thing you'll notice is the red and green lights flashing on the expander. Uh, remember you have to use the expander and the uh, SD card so you have uh, a data logging so you know um, that a proper UTD file is being created. Uh, so those two lights will flash intermittently then they will flash either together or um, uh, individually. Uh, another thing you'll notice is the red light on your L on your uh, GPS will flash. Um, that'll flash intermittently uh, until it's locked to GPS. Out here in the uh, wide open front yard here, I should get a GPS lock in about uh, 30 to 45 seconds. Once that light has gone off, you know that the GPS is acquired and you're ready to start your ritual. So my GPS light just went off. And I'm going to go ahead and refer to the You There support website to uh, guide me in the uh, ritual. The first thing you want to do is make sure your airspeed sensor is working. Um, normally, what you would do is uh, blow into the pit, uh, pit -tot tube. Oh, I'm sorry, what you would do is uh, cover the hole on the pit -tot tube and squeeze down on the tube. This will create some back pressure, let the membrane inside the airspeed sensor know that you are. Uh, recording data for the air speed sensor. In my case, I'm running a carbon fiber tube into the quarter, uh, quarter inch uh, nylon tubing. So I'm just gonna give it a couple light puffs. Remember the membrane inside the air speed sensor is very delicate. So you don't wanna uh, blow hard on there or uh, give it really, really hard puffs. So now that uh, the air speed sensor has calculated that, uh, it is that it's receiving a signal to the Ruby, we're gonna go ahead and start the ritual. What you'll do is you'll start off with the plane pointing north after you've done that. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure if your plane has elevators, which almost all planes do, what you want to do is point your aircraft to the east. So for me, this would be the east. And you pull back all the way on the elevator. For me, all the way back, all the way forward. Now, if your control surfaces move in the wrong direction, that's okay. Just uh, swap them in your transmitter and then uh, continue on with the ritual. The next step is going to be your mode switch. What you want to do is point the aircraft approximately to the south, and what this is going to do is tell Ruby either to be in uh, manual mode, aided mode, or return to home. So I've got my aircraft pointed to the south. I'm going to flip my mode switch to aided mode and return to home. Then back to aided mode, back to the off position. The next step in the uh, ritual is going to be your uh, ailerons. If your aircraft has ailerons, you're going to go ahead and point your aircraft to the west. And you're going to go ahead and move your aileron all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Try not to move the elevator as much as you can. Uh, you want to make sure you get nice clean signals recorded onto the Ruby. The next step is going to be my throttle. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn the aircraft again to the north. And we'll go full speed on the throttle all the way up then all the way back down. Again, it's very important that you have your motor disconnected uh, in case a failsafe kicks in or something happens, you don't want that prop to cut you. The next thing you'll do is you'll tell Ruby about your rudder. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and point the aircraft to the east again. 
and we're going to move our rudder all the way to the right, then all the way to the left. Again, don't stress too much if the control surfaces aren't moving in the correct direction. Just go ahead and reverse them in your uh, transmitter, and Ruby will log the uh, correct uh, movements for that. Next, if your aircraft has flaps, you'll go ahead and point your aircraft to the south, and you'll engage your flaps to mid position or full position uh, if you have it on a three position switch, or you would either engage it on or off. In my case, I'm not running uh, flaps at this time. I am running, however, a pan and tilt camera. Uh, I don't have it on the aircraft now, but I've got servos to uh, supplement that. So for the pan, we're going to go ahead and point the aircraft to the west. And we're going to move our pan all the way to the right, then all the way to the left, back to center. Uh, I do also have a tilt on my uh, camera, so what we're going to do is go ahead and turn Ruby over to the north and we're going to activate our tilt. Uh, on the tilt, you're going to move all the way up, then all the way down, then back to center. Uh, this would be uh, the second to last process is we're going to go ahead and turn the aircraft to the south. And we're going to train Ruby. Uh, we're going to actually uh, let Ruby calibrate the uh, sensors so we know we have the correct orientation of the aircraft. So we have it pointed to the south. Uh, you'll do two things in this step. You'll go ahead and point the aircraft slightly to the south. Then you'll go ahead and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, tilt your aircraft slightly down. And you'll go ahead and disconnect your transmitter. Now Ruby has just kicked into fail safe mode. If my prop was connected, I'd probably get a nice little nasty cut. So now that we have the fail safe uh, correctly um, logged in there, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn the aircraft all the way to the north. We'll disconnect the battery, and you're done. Your ritual is now completed. So uh, Ruby has mapped all the controls from your transmitter onto the way it likes to be on the Ruby. What you'll do from here is take out the SD card, pop it into your computer, upload the file to Jim, or you'll actually upload the file to support at youthere.com. I'll go ahead and put the description in the link below. And um, once you've sent out that uh, email, what you'll do is also in the email let Jim know what kind of transmitter you're using, uh, if you're using Spectrum, JR, Futaba, and also if you're using any long range system like I am with the Dragon Link. Um, any other information you think will be pertinent to uh, your specific aircraft, send that off to uh, support at youthere.com and Jim will rework the controls for your aircraft, send you a new file, uh, possibly some firmware updates if there's any available, and you'll go ahead and upload that back into the Ruby and you'll be good to go. Stay tuned and I'll show you the uh, maiden flight of the Ruby with the uh, 